Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. Does biological evolution align with Islamic perspectives of human evolution? Is there such a thing as human evolution in Islam? In our new series on this topic, Biological Evolution, we'll explore and try to make sense of it within the Islamic context. To get the conversation started, let's sit down and talk to Dr. Shabir Ali. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. A pleasure to be on. So we're starting a new series on biological evolution. Um, you know, uh, when you mentioned this topic to me, I, in my head I thought to myself, hmm, this seems like a very controversial topic. <laughs> so why did it, other than the fact that it's controversial, uh, why did this pique your interest? Well, it's one of the questions we get here most often on, on the show, and we've addressed it from time to time. Uh, but usually our answers are, are brief, um, and uh, there's so much more to be said about the topic. It needs to be deconstructed and uh, we need to look at the whole history of uh, the idea of evolution, how it came to be discussed and the various responses that have been given to it and uh, the evolving idea uh, about evolution among uh, people of faith, uh, people of other faiths and also uh, people of the Muslim faith uh, concerning the topic of evolution mm -hmm. itself. And you do a lot of dialogues. Is this something uh, that you also dialogue about and sort of based on, you know, uh, community questions as well? Or? Yes. Uh, sometimes I've entered into debates with uh, atheists and uh, naturally for atheists, uh, evolution is a trump card against religion and they think that um, um, religious people are a little bit backward, they don't um, pay attention to developments in science, and um, one of the ideas in modern science is uh, the theory of evolution, and uh, people of religion seem to be uh, out of that sphere of discussion. So naturally, I have had to read up on the subject and be prepared to deal with that as a, as a, dis a topic of discussion. But even among uh, people of faith now, uh, the idea of evolution is becoming uh, more and more discussed uh, than, than ever before, and most recently, uh, Dennis Venema and uh, Scott McKnight uh, co-authored a book uh, writing about uh, evolution from a Christian perspective. Uh, the book is called Adam and the Genome Project, and uh, in, in that book they discuss some of the latest uh, uh, discoveries uh, affecting uh, the belief in, in the theory of evolution, dealing with uh, the tracing of the human genome. You know, nowadays you can trace the human genome back mm -hmm. to ancestors. Yeah. You can find out, um, you know, where, where do the people of England as a whole come from, for example, by tracing the genomes of um, individuals. So, so all of this development is occurring and people of uh, religion are drawn into the discussion. So for some time, people have been able to, ne uh, to neglect and ignore uh, the theory of evolution as much as we're talking about uh, religious subjects. Uh, but now uh, we uh, feel more than ever the need to integrate uh, all areas of knowledge, uh, in faith and science, and uh, in particular, the theory of evolution from now, science. Now, um, obviously it sounds like it's a you know, very broad uh, and complicated area that we're trying to focus on. So what are some of the different issues that you're hoping uh, we tackle together in this series? Well, in terms of the history, we'll talk a little bit about um, Charles Darwin, his uh, voyage on the Beagle, his discoveries, his uh, writing of the book on the origin of the species, and then subsequently the, the, the descent of man. Uh, how his um, um, theorizing has been received by the uh, faith communities, especially in America, uh, with the Scopes trial and uh, a, a large uh, body of um, resistance against the theory of evolution, which continues to this day with uh, uh, debates uh, going on uh, between people of faith and evolutionists. Evolutionists wants, want to teach the theory of evolution. People of faith uh, uh, are trying to curtail that teaching and, and insisting on teaching so, something that they call creation science. So what is that? How do Muslims fall, fit into that uh, general discussion? What are some of the books that have been written from within the Muslim community um, uh, explaining a Muslim stance and what various Muslim stances have been given uh, to this uh, um, or for or against this theory, including a recent book by uh, Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud, uh, which is about the Quran in general, uh, but also has a section dealing with creation in which he talks about the possibilities of uh, our view concerning 
Evolution, uh, an important book by Dr. Maurice Bouquet entitled What is the Origin of Man? Um, so we will try to put together all of this information to see how uh, Muslims today, especially Muslim students who are mm -hmm. studying uh, science in the colleges and uh, in biological um, sciences today, the theory of evolution is taken for granted. So how can students maintain their faith uh, when they are uh, studying this complex topic? Mm -hmm. uh, what should they represent their faith to be? In, in discussing this and how can they reconcile between belief in God on the one hand and the theory of evolution on the other. So, uh, you know, you talked about students uh, can benefit from this who are, who are studying within this area. You know, it's a conversation within uh, atheists that, that use this as a trump card. What about the average person who's watching our show and, you know, watches the show on a regular basis? What can, what can our community take away from this kind of a conversation? Well, the average person needs to know about uh, this um, a general idea because uh, m one cannot live in a dichotomous uh, world in which, uh, you know, in, in the mosque we speak one language and then outside you speak another language. Uh, in the mosque we speak about creation as if there is no evolution and then outside we speak about evolution as if there is no creation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they, they, and, and it's, it's not only the college students that are exposed to this and university students, but uh, the average person, you will go to visit the Ontario Science Museum and you will see displays showing a development of creatures from a hunchback uh, um, ape-like creature to a fully upright man. Uh, and, and wherever you look, there is this uh, idea of development. New fossils are being discovered and yeah. reported about in the newspapers and in your favorite uh, news channel. Uh, so, and and in, in all of these reports, the journalists will take the prevailing and current view uh, that evolution is a fact and um, they will fit the new discovery within that broad uh, spectrum of uh, the evolution of biological life. So when, when everything that we hear is presented from that perspective, that evolution is true and uh, more and more discoveries are fortifying uh, the theory, the average uh, man and woman or boy and girl who is trying to f uh, follow the faith of Islam or other faiths as well, need to know how to reconcile that new information with our traditional faith so that one does not have this kind of dichotomous sort of uh, thinking uh, it, creation for a mon one moment and evolution for the other moment. Uh, of course, um, I, I can give away something by, by saying that uh, our conclusion will be uh, that uh, we need to reconcile the two and speak of creative evolution mm -hmm. uh, rather than speaking of creation as being something separate and distinct from the theory of evolution or the theory of evolution being something separate and distinct from. Uh, creation. I think that's a good cliffhanger. Then we'll continue the conversation in our next episode. Thank you very much, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Hey, YouTube. We hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.